All right, so I'm going to re-record this last guide video that I had recorded earlier this morning without sound. That was funny. Anyway, this is the guide video I had brought up at the end of our last series. Hey, thanks for that. That was uh, that was the old lady coming on by. Anyway, I was going to discuss profits um, that you can get out of uh, junkyard cars, right? So this is a spreadsheet that I use to track all of the cars that I work on uh, in my uh, main save. And I have it sorted here and I have totals at the top. Total profit that I have uh, accumulated so far um, uh, in cars that I have restored and dumped. So these are typically junkyard cards. There's a few barn cars in here too as I was messing around. And then the average profit that I've made per car that I've uh, flipped and sold. And this is a full restoration, not just a quick flip. So one that I take from whatever percent it was to 100%. And one, one thing to note here, and the reason I have it up, is that if you look at the total profit per car, the ones that are the highest profit, and I have it sorted by highest profit, the Ferrari F50, the Pagani, the Pagani, the Porsche, the Porsche, the Porsche, the Lamborghini, uh, Lamborghini, Jaguar F-Type, Mercedes, BMW. You're kind of catching the theme here. And this is what I brought up in the uh, the in-game discussion video. The cars you're going to get the most profit out of are probably going to be your exotics and your sports cars. The ones that have the lowest profit return, uh, the 09 Opel Corsa, the 69 Tempest Magnum, which is kind of surprising. I might have screwed up when I was working on that. A 70 Olds Cutlass, $9,000 worth of profit. Uh, the 93 Volvo, 16K profit. 96 Civic, 16K profit. You see this. So those cars, clearly not huge profit margins. Um, but you get into the uh, performance cars, a Dodge Challenger, a Nissan Z, a Corvette, 75, 75, 70. Um, and then the exotics into the 100K range. The Pagani and the Ferrari into the 200K profit range. So those are going to be the cars when you're trying to build up your inventory of money early on to expand parts, expand your parking garage, get your own inventory of cars uh, that you want to work on. Uh, I mean, here's the inventory of cars that I have and, and the stats that I'm keeping right now as far as uh, and the current value of the cars that I uh, own and have restored. Um uh, and then there's stats on top speed HP, but you've seen this on the three star series. Uh, point is to get that kind of money, you have to start selling cars. That's the point. All right. So just going to save on my spreadsheet so I don't lose it. And then we'll hop in here and let's do a quick assessment of our inventory. Uh, I got a headlight I don't need right now. So let's sell, put that back into our warehouse body panel parts all right um so let's head to the junkyard and again what we're going to prioritize on this junkyard run is we're looking for exotics or sports cars those are the two cars that are going to have the highest profit margin that we're going to want to work with exotics and sports cars get this loaded up all right Get my hoodie readjusted there. I like the hoodie. It is like the gaming shirt, right? The hoodie. Uh, you feel me? You feel me, Kel? Is the game is is the hoodie not the gaming attire, right? She gets it. All right. I always go to the right first, and you'll you'll start to remember where these cars will spawn. Typically, a car can spawn right here. Sometimes one will spawn right here. Occasionally one straight ahead here. Boy, there is no car spawns yet. Sometimes there's one up the hill here. Um, there's not one here. All right, we got a hot rod. The Smith & Parker Arizona Kid. Hey, Lucas. This is the video I'm making for you, and you're sneaking into the vid. Nice job. Let's see what engine this one. A V8 one-head carb. Okay. Hey, another hot rod. A Smith & Parker Eliminator with a V8 overhead valve SS engine. Hmm. Okay. 
those are pr I honestly I don't think I have that on my flipping spreadsheet to confirm that those are um, good flip cars or not good flip cars uh, this is a terrible junkyard right now it is not an exotic okay so oh uh, what do we got here what do we got here here we go Porsche Carrera. There's our exotic. So $24,000 buy price and it's valued at 25. So we were getting it at the right price. Uh, so that's going to be the car we're going to flip. So let's write down first. Let's write our uh, starting uh, money in here. So we're starting with how much money? Money. 312,147. Start in money. Okay. Save that. That's what we're starting with. I'm going to buy this car. And there's a reason I'm keeping track of, of how much our money is at the start. We'll buy the car, we'll do a full restoration. Then we'll sell the car and everything we buy in between. Then we just compare our uh, end money to our starting money. Whatever the difference is there, that's our that's our profit, right? Buy car. And we'll take this out to the garage. I'm just going to move that text window down a bit. I will group starting money. And then as we as we move through the, the video, we'll move it back up. Save. All right, let's return to the garage. So we got a Porsche. Waiting for her to load. All right, first step in a restoration, take it to the car wash. Got a wash on. We'll do the interior. Then we're going to work the interior parts first. So I'll do a dis disassemble of the interior parts that are existing. Then in interior assemble, add, 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 normal. And we'll go to the interior shop. Buy two Carrera seats. Those are nice leather seats. And a G GT uh, steering wheel, leather wrapped. That is sweet. Interior assemble. And put in the nice new seats, 100% seats, obviously. And go to normal mode, and then we can sit in it. And that interior looks sharp, right? Now, it's interesting. Right now, we haven't... Um, we did a detail of the interior, but these parts are in bad condition. So you can see the center console looks bad. The doors have... They're bad, but it's going to be a bad... This is going to be a cool car. Normal mode. Okay, so then the next thing I do, I have the interior at 100%. Then I will go through and remove all the body panels that exist on the car right now. I think there's a window back here. Yep. All right, so I think I have all the body panels off. You can always go here to... The body's at 1%, interior is at 100%. Okay. Let's move this to lifter 1. And we'll go ahead and weld on it. 2300 bucks to weld it, but that'll get the frame to 100%. Now if you go ahead and pop in their car. See how much nicer it looks inside here now? Apparently welding fixes the center console. 
but she looks sharp now. All right. Welder back. Pop it in the air for a sec. Just do a once over. I think we got all the body panels off. After you weld it, you can always see if you missed any like rusted fender or something. All right. And if we go to our inventory, windows cannot be repaired. So I'm just gonna sell the windows. Lights can't be repaired, I'm selling that. These are all red parts. Red parts can't be repaired. So I'm just selling them. Same for the seats, can't be repaired. So we don't have any parts that we've removed off of this car so far that we can repair uh, to 100%. So, and I don't have any Porsche body panels in the uh, warehouse because we haven't done any uh, warehouse work on this car yet. So the advantage of having those parts pre-purchased from previous junkyard runs uh, won't exist on this build. But as you get deeper into the game, that stuff could exist. Take off the upper. And lower. Forget the rubber bushings. Get that knuckle. Okay, let's pop over to this side. Rubber bushing. Rubber bushing. Let's get this wheel off. Now we have four wheels on this junkyard car. So we might not have to buy rims. I always consider that like a successful barn find if I have to just repair the rims and not replace them. I don't know why I feel that way. I just, that's how I feel. All right, get that end link. Oh. Penetrating oil there. Got the cross member out. And how you choose to tear your suspension down, there's no right or wrong, wrong way to do it. Just take them out in order. Okay, so we got all the suspension parts off on the rear, or on the front, excuse me, let's head to the rear. Couple shots of WD-40 here on your old rusty bolts. Get the brake pads, discs off. Drive axles. Well, can I can I target the right thing someday? There we go. Knuckle cover, upper suspension arm, shock. That's off. Let's head to this side. Do the same. suspension arm off and the knuckle okay and we should be able to pop over here and let's see where the starter is on this trans doesn't look like it has a starter in it right now okay trans is off that exhaust piece off 
All right, now we can get the cherry picker and pull the motor. Drain the oil. It actually has oil in it? Holy cow. Honestly, that is not something common in junkyard cars. Like one, having an oil pan, but two, actually having oil in it? Doesn't even look like it has an oil filter. Yeah. Where's the oil filter go? Right there. It doesn't have an oil filter. How much oil can be in here? Well, let's drain it. That was it. Literally like a drop. There's like some sludge in the oil pan. That was all that was left. That's fine. We drained it. Pull the engine. All right. Now let's just double check and make sure we got everything out of the engine bay. I think we did. Oh, we thought missed on the fuse, fuse box. Let's get that out. So what I like to do on these full restorations that I'm taking the car to 100% is exactly this. I can stare down the the outline of the car and I see no parts. Everything is out. All right, so let's separate the rims. Hey, these these rims look like they might be good. We'll separate out the wishbone shock absorbers. Just in part because you can sell the pieces a little bit more than you can sell the individual parts. Or you could salvage the individual parts too if you wished. On this guide series, I haven't been salvaging parts because I hadn't intended on doing any three-star parts on this run anyway. There we go. Shocks are separated. Tires are separated. Let's mount the engine up here. Install engine on stand. Okay. And start lathing the brakes that we took off. Let's just tear the engine apart. off. Heard the brake lathe finish. Move the lathe brake. Put another one on. are done. These camshafts off. I heard the brake lathe just finished, so we can go pull that brake lathe. Okay, we're out of lathe and material. Brake lathing material, that is. Okay. Nope. Is there a... I think there's a knuckle somewhere that we got to take off first. Or is it that chain you got to take off first? No. There is something we're missing here before we can remove the timing chain. And I think it's a knuckle or something, but got to find it.
Well, hell, heck. Let's head to the back of this first. Nope. Let's get this clutch plate off first. This is the one car that has a different clutch plate. It's kind of interesting. Oh, maybe I can get it off. pen you have to take off before you can take the chain? Yep. Then you can take the chains. Now, can you remove the heads? Yep. It was just the oil pan. You couldn't get the timing chain off without taking that oil pan off. I knew there was something about that. I thought there was a uh, another knuckle or a timing shoe that I had missed. But it wasn't. It was just the oil pan. Get these heads off first. Heads are off. Then we're going to pop in here. We'll get these crankshaft bearings off. Then we'll pull the rod caps. And drop all the pistons. kind of just set yourself in one position here. Sometimes I do the pistons from upside down, but once in a while I'll do them side to side like this. At least from the side view of when you have it on the engine um, uh, mount, it doesn't get the same glare that you get if you have it, if you're looking down from above. How about the pistons? are out, crankshaft, and the block. All right, so we got all the pieces of the engine out. I know there's no body panels, but I was just checking. And then we would go here, and we have four pages of parts. Were all the rims repairable? Repairable rim, repairable rim, repairable rim, repairable rim. Yay! All right, so let's repair all these parts. And all these parts are parts that we have taken off of the car. So they're not parts that I had been holding on to and hadn't repaired yet. Helpful tip, I always find the last green bars like the easiest to stop at because you have two going in and two coming out. If you start a repair, I'll find one here that is a good example. Actually, all of these are ending right where I want it to. So, But if you didn't like where the green bars were at on a particular repair minigame, and you wanted it to be in a different spot, just start the repair like this. Just let it go, and then just hit escape, and then start the repair again. So it doesn't cost you the money. So if you had trouble, you always like to stop at the far right, like I like to stop, just keep looking for it until you find the green bars you want. Like so. Get these last four pages of parts. We got some good parts on this car, honestly. 
But importantly, the gearbox, that's expensive. Was the engine block repairable? Because that'll be a pricier part. It's nice when the expensive parts are repairable. The other thing when I'm doing a, a cash car like this, if that gearbox had not been repairable, um, or the engine block is not repairable, the engine heads aren't repairable, if I have the option to buy a performance part, I will. The profit margin on a performance part is higher than the profit margin on a non-performance part. Now that being said, if I already have the non-performance part, I'll use that. I won't hold on to a non-performance part just to get a little bit higher profit margin. But if I have to replace the part because the part was, you know, red and not repairable, then definitely I'll buy the performance part. Oh good, the engine block's at 31%, so nice to have that as a repairable option. And that would be, definitely be a repair you don't want to screw up. Because an engine block, that is pricey. And even the repair is 300 bucks a couple of times over. Okay, so we have the engine uh, or all the parts repaired that we can repair. There's obviously still a lot of parts, if we sort by condition here, uh, that we were not able to repair. So we'll put the con bad condition at the top. It's always fun when you get a text message during the middle of a video. There we go. So let's sell all parts that are below ah, 70%. All right, so I got rid of all the red parts. Over here to part mount, put on the engine block. We don't have a crank. We gotta buy a crankshaft, which is a $300 crankshaft. It's fine. Pistons we have, and rings we have. This is out of our inventory of parts that we've already purchased previously. Now again, could I have bought performance pistons and got a little bit higher profit margin? Yeah, but I already have pistons. I already purchased them, so. Just gonna use the inventory that we have. This is where you can kind of optimize your profit margins on your uh, on having that inventory of parts already. Or repairing barn parts or repairing junkyard parts. have an oil pan. We do. Well, interestingly, it let me put the oil pan on before I put the timing stuff on, or I had to take the timing stuff off, or the oil pan off before I could put the timing stuff on. That's fine. Grab an oil fill tray. Porsche clutch. Clutch cover, we had. Let's rotate the engine here. I don't have an alternator. Now, an alternator I can get as a performance part. So, I'll put a performance alternator on. Water pumps are not performance parts, I can tell you that. No engine's water pump is a performance water part. Water pump pulley, it's a Porsche water pump pulley. How 
power steering pump. Power steering you can get as a performance part. There we go. Now engine heads. We had an engine head because we were able to repair it off the original engine. So we'll put the originals back on. Now we could have got this as a performance part, but this comes back to that same theory. If I have the part, I'm not buying it as a performance part. If I don't have it, like I don't have spark plugs, let's get the performance spark plugs. Which should be down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll put performance plugs in this bad boy. Actually, is this a V10? This is a V10. I didn't buy enough plugs. Two more. Okay, and we're gonna have to get these caps on. See, there's one, two, three, four, eight per head, so 16. And the caps will just be 10, 16. Caps are just um, standard items here. Not gonna get performance cap bearings. That side's on. Let's get this head on. Again, we had the head. Plop in the performance plugs that we purchased. Okay, we're missing a cam and a rocker here. Cam shaft caps, we already got those. So we can get two performance cams. I hit buy for this side. Why did I buy performance? Because I needed to buy the part, so I just bought the performance part. If I had had the original, I would have just used the original. You're getting the pattern, right, Lucas? Camshaft caps. The intake manifold, again, that would could have been a performance part, but because we had it and we were able to repair it, I'm using it. Fuel rails, I don't have. So we'll get two of these as performance items. DOS manifold we don't have. I'm only buying one right now because I'm not sure if the other side has a different size. That is a cool looking manifold, exhaust manifold, isn't it? It's like a crack, a kraken or something. Is it the same? It is. Yeah, that, that exhaust manifold, that's got to be the coolest exhaust manifold in the game. Look-wise. Performance-wise, who knows, but look-wise, that is, that is really cool looking. Alright, and then there'll be probably two throttles. And I was right. Throttles typically you can get as performance items, and again, we were right on that. Put on the performance throttle. Okay, fuel filter. We'll need a fuel pump and a fuel filter, so I just bought both. All right, let's get to the front of this issue here. Timing chain.
two time shoes on that side. Not going to buy four because I don't know if the time and shoes on the other side will be the same or different. Don't have that. Cam gear B. Cam gear A. Don't have the engine head cover. And I'm betting they have ignition coils on top. Are they just the plain ignition coils? Yeah. Which plain ignition coils can get as a performance part. So by 10. There we go. And timing chain. Just curious if it's the same timing chain or a different one. The same. So I'm betting it'll be the same shoes on this side. Yep. So my two. And then we'll buy the same cam gear A and B. Clear up the list. Timing cover we don't have. But you do now. Crankshaft pulley. And we should have a whole bunch of... Hey, we leveled. We should have a whole bunch of idler rollers. Serpentine belt A. And where an A exists, a B exists. So I'm just going to buy the B belt ahead of time. Okay. And then a timing cover, which we could have, or a engine head cover. Should have bought the B when we bought the A. Pop on the ignition coils. And don't have the air cleaner box. Same air cleaner box? It is. Now the, I'm assuming we can get a performance air filter. We can. Then will the cover be the same? Probably, because it doesn't have an A or B, so I'm just going to buy two. Right, I think the V10 Porsche engine is done. All right, that looks kind of cool. Let's take that off the stand. We'll pop back over to our cherry picker. Oops, install engine. Move the equipment back. And where is the oil filler? That's a good question. We may have to find a different spot that the oil goes in. Battery we don't have. Okay, so we got some stuff. So at the car parts store, I saw we need a brake master cylinder. We need a battery. Those are two things we know we need. 
I just bought those. Where was the battery sitting? There's the brake master cylinder. Battery sits. There's the battery sitting in this one. There it is. Coolant and then a power steering one. It's got ABS, so we need an ABS module. Coolant reservoir B. Steering reservoir. ABS module. Fuse box A. Fuses, we had purchased a pile of fuses, so we should have all the fuses we need to do a rebuild. Fuse boxes and covers are at the uh, electronics shop. Okay, that's on. Then we need an ECUA, right? Yep. That you can get as a performance part. That's a new, with the drag racing DLC. And again, performance parts just sell at a higher profit margin. That's why I'm putting performance parts where I can. All right, let's pop to the front. Three radiators on this thing? One, two, three. Fan housing, fan. Radiators are in. Get a windshield washer fluid reservoir. Okay, let's go ahead and mount all our fluids. Or unmount. To put in our fluids. Oh, we forgot the coolant reservoir. I think I added that to the list and didn't buy it. Or did I buy it and not mount it? That was what I did. Put in our coolant. <sighs> Coolant's in. Power steering fluid. And I still gotta figure out where to put the oil in this thing. I did not see an oil filter cap on it. I'm thinking it might be on the back side of that trans. We'll see. Brake fluid. Which you can put brake fluid in before you put in the brakes. You can't put in coolant before you put in the radiator. The game has its quirks. Alright, let's do the rear because I want to see part mount. Put in that. This is the gearbox. Okay, that's where the starter goes. I don't have a starter. Uh, 
Yep, and there's the oil fill cap now. Okay, so we were right. The exhaust, can I get it as performance? Sure you can. exhaust on let's go ahead and get the rear suspension set up but a lot of these parts we should have in our inventory of parts either because we repaired it off of this car or we had already purchased it from our previous story orders that we've done or in the case of the shock uh, we don't have a rear one okay shock the dual wishbone shock absorber yeah real one well, let's go assemble those real quick we had done front double wishbone shock absorbers we had not done rears as far as our inventory of shocks on that side get this side done then we'll figure out the wheel situation after we do the front suspension but you can see when you already have an inventory of parts how much quicker this can fly as you just go through the suspension like nothing There's just plain discs in the back and vents in the front. Yep. We could have bought the performance brakes. I just chose not to. Okay. That part's done. Let's get the front suspension done. Oh, and then a fuel tank. bought a fuel pump already. We'll cover it there. We don't have a steering rack. Do now. And the, the sway bar we probably won't have. Nope. Let's get our rubber bushings and the cross members so we don't forget that. rods, knuckle, outer tie rod. Oh, I guess I grabbed a knuckle cover before the outer tie rod. It's okay. Wheel hub, bearing, lower suspension arm. Wheel hub cap, shock absorber. End link. Upper suspension arm. And a vented disc brake with a nice pad and a new caliper. And that side's done. Let's click over to this side. Knuckle, tie rods, inner and outer, 
Lower arm. Shock. End link. And then an upper arm. Which we don't have, because we went through all our upper arms. We'll just buy the one. Just so that we kind of keep our total profit clean. Knuckle cover. Heel hub. Bearing. Cap. And then the brakes. Vents. Pads. Calipers. All right. Now let's check on our wheel sizes here. So we have 265. And again, pad of paper for uh, tire sizes, 265, 35, 19s in the front, 335, 30, 20s in the rear. All right. So I will go to the tire shop and the tires I'll buy, I'll buy Dominators. They're the most expensive and the highest profit margin. With, let's see, we got 19 inch size with 265 in the front, 35s. 219, yep. Bye. Then the rears, 220s, 335s with uh, 30. 30 profile, right? Yep. Bye. Okay. Let's head over to our tire machine and mount these tires up. Those 335s are huge. Good tires. Take that off, get the next one going and balanced. Well, that one is installing. Install the next tire. Balance. And install the last tire. Balance the third one. And balance the last one. Balanced. Mount her up. Oh, shoot, I didn't check. I always want to make sure. See, I almost put a 265. You want the 335s in the back. 265s in the front. When you have different sizes front and back. You really want to pay attention to which one you're putting. There we go. In which position. Rear tires. Fronts. And a last tire. And the last piece, we have to do the body. Now, if you had parts, you could go to your warehouse and boy, you have body panels. We have none. So we have to go straight to the car. We have no body panels that we repaired. I don't think this has performance parts, it does not. So we'll go in here and we're just gonna buy uh, one of every body panel because we don't have any. There you go. And mount up the body. Now, interestingly, when you're turning a car for a profit, you're just flipping it, you know, like we're restoring this car and then we're just dumping it. Don't paint it. The thousand bucks or whatever you end up spending on a paint job, uh, like if you wanted to paint individual parts and paint them different colors and do all kinds of stuff, tint the windows, you get none of the money for that. You would think, hey, if I painted the car just like washing the car, it should increase its value because it looks cooler. It does not. There is no profit from paint. Paint is solely for your own ego there. Need a plate. 
plates. For me, I always end up buying a Wyoming plate. I uh, can't remember if it has a front plate or not, but we'll just buy two. It does not have a front plate. Oh, well, we overinvested in one license plate. That's fine. All right, this car is done. There's the sell value, but you can double check. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. You could align the wheels. That doesn't give you any profit. You could align the lights. No profit there either. Uh, you could dyno it. You could price it, whatever. Um, when you're just doing it for this, and I'm just doing it for a profit purpose, I get it to 100%, everything, and then I dump it. So selling it for $270,640. Now the game says our profit's $245,659. Let's see if we agree. Sell. Yes, sell. All right. So we're at $505,417. Let's go in here. There's our starting money. So our end money was four. Five oh five four one seven. So how much profit did we actually get? Well, let's pop up the old calculator. Five oh five four seventeen minus three one two one four seven. So the game said it was higher than what it always seems to overcalculate. I don't know why it does that. Profit, 193,207. Profit. So that's our actual profit, $193,270 from our start to end. Um, now obviously, there was parts that we had already purchased previously, so that gets calculated in. You probably got to take that out of your total profit a bit. But as far as ways to make money, to be able to improve your shop, be able to buy the cars you want, take them racing, uh, expand your parking garage, this is how you're going to make money. I mean, we just made $193,000 and profit in about 58 minutes not working terribly fast or terribly hard so and it was fun that is a cool car so this is indeed the last of my guide series lucas isaac and parker i hope you like this one i hope you learned something hope you end up digging car mechanic as much as i do um and i will race you in the future take care guys